Well, looks like we're heading back to Push Square again. I think that's like our new unofficial home or something. Greetings fellow Vita fans, this is James with PS Vita at 2am, coming at you once again with a not so splendid video, I think that should just be like my second monologue there, at this point anyway. And if you're new here and love everything PlayStation Vita, don't forget to subscribe, and make sure to leave me your thoughts and opinions down below. Okay now as some of you may have heard, as in like the whole world at this point, the PlayStation Vita surprisingly got a new firmware update, but not surprising depending on the way you look at it, firmware 3.74, and in this topic here today I'm going to be explaining how this will be affecting both the official side of PlayStation Vita along with the unofficial side via homebrew hacks and whatnot for the Vita. Insert an image of Palpatine here because that's just a running gag on this channel. So we're gonna be heading off now to Push Square, our favorite article source these past couple of months and home base at this point to be talking about the official side of how this is going to affect things with our homebrew discussion following thereafter. Sorry Palpatine you'll have to wait a few minutes. New PS3 PS Vita firmware updates Strengthen account security, two-factor authentication required. With a lovely picture of the PlayStation 3 all in red, I think that's a very appropriate picture too, just saying. Okay, so here's what it does. Sony has improved account security on two of its legacy machines through new firmware updates deployed today. For PlayStation 3, we're looking at update 4.89, while PlayStation Vita is now on version 3.74. Essentially, the two console patches remove the ability to create new PSN accounts on the system themselves, now requiring a smart phone or PC to set one up. This introduces two-factor authentication as a standard on PS Vita at least, along with like every other website that exists out there these days. According to Planet Vita, the patch's notes for both updates read as follows. Signing into the PlayStation Network now requires two-factor authentication for better account protection, account creation for PlayStation Network, and certain account management functions are no longer available on the console. Use your PC or mobile browser to use account management features with improved performance, speed, and security. In terms of the removal of account management settings, PS Vita users are reporting code redemptions now points you to an external website through either a QR code, and I can confirm that this is in fact a thing because I did try it out, or a standard URL. The same goes for accessing general billing information. Signing into the PlayStation 3 and PS Vita systems will now also require device passwords. Gee, Sony, you're just providing more and more hoops for us to jump through these days now, aren't you? While creating a PSN account on PS3 and PS Vita is no longer possible, you'll still be able to log into existing ones as well as set up profiles externally either through your PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, or Sony's website via of course a PC or mobile device. So in a nutshell here, the two biggest updates are you now require a two-step verification to log into the PlayStation Network with your Vita in order to sync up all those lovely trophies and just make it rain bling. And you will no longer be able to create an account via the handheld. So if you have no interest in modding your Vita, and I know a number of you out there who watch this channel don't, then to be quite honest, this is actually a pretty positive update. I know I can't believe those words are coming out of my mouth either, because it's giving you more security with your accounts on these two platforms. Yes, I know it is a bit more hoops to jump over just to access your account now, but the fact that Sony is doing this means that we can now put our fears to rest when it comes to them shutting down the PlayStation stores for these two legacy platforms, because you know, recently Nintendo has done that, so we had a fear that maybe Sony would be doing that, but no, it's pretty safe to say now at this point, at least in my opinion, that they're probably more than likely not going to do that because why would they be going through all of this trouble keeping the accounts more secure on there when they were just going to plan to get rid of it in the first place? I mean, it will close eventually, just doesn't seem like anytime soon. That's just my opinion anyway. It might be wrong. It's probably wrong. So for anybody who is having issues logging into their PSN account, I will have a link down in the video description where it will lead you directly to Sony's website. All you got to do is log into your account there, then click the auto generate button and enter that into your password section on your Vita and you should be good to go online. Now, for those of you with modded Vitas, it's a little bit more of a different story here. So I'm going to be explaining now how my personal situation went. Spoiler alert, it wasn't that great. Now, for the sake of this video, I decided to bite the bullet and update my PS Vita to firmware 3.74 to see what it would change when it comes to the hacks I have on it. I do this for you. <laughs> 
the people. And here is some footage of me doing the dark deed. Believe me, the trail of tears while I was doing it were immense. I updated it, and from what I can tell here, it did seem to affect a few tweaks that I had on my handheld. For one, I was on 3.73 before this update, along with the method to hack your Vita on that firmware. In other words, I was using H Encore 2 to manually hack my Vita each time I wanted to use those hacks. And this was by design, because I didn't want anything permanent on it, at least not for the time being. I wanted to be able to choose when I could hack my Vita, just in case. And here's footage of me trying to access H Encore 2, and as you can see now, every time I'm trying to access the hack, it just basically crashes. It looks like it's accepting the hack at first, because it is saying that it is successful, but as soon as I try to back out of set app, yeah, it just goes to a black screen. And I tried this like 10 times, and it kept doing the same thing. So we can confirm that, at the very least, H Encore 2, at the making of this video no longer works when you were on this particular firmware and method. That along with the fact that my SD to Vita is now pretty much useless. Why couldn't you defend us Palpatine? Now again, keep in mind that this is the hacking community we're talking about and things can change at any given time. Heck, this video could even be outdated at the moment it goes up. So things are always changing when it comes to that. Please work your magic there Palpatine. Now I should just mention real quickly here that I did try to access PSN via my PSTV as well. And I'm on 3.6 zero firmware with this one, just FYI. And yeah, everything worked flawless. I just spoofed to version 3.74 and all my hacks and homebrews work just fine. I didn't see anything different with them. So although it doesn't seem like Sony really did much in the way of patching exploits when it came to this firmware update, which isn't really surprising because I think they just wanted to do the whole account security thing, we do have some proof as I have shown here that it can affect some of the hacks you may have on your system. Your mileage may vary though, depending on what method you used. So at that point, I would just say if you already have a modded Vita, just spoof to 3.74 because there really is no reason to update the firmware quite honestly. And if you were planning to hack your Vita, well you might have to wait a little bit longer to do so unfortunately, which I found out to be the case with a lot of users out there. This was just bad timing on Sony's part I guess. It's almost like they know. And I will also have a link to a nifty little app called Update Blocker for those of you who are worried about your system ever automatically being updated or maybe you accidentally updating it yourself. Itself, this will prevent all updates from ever being able to access your device. And again, if you're having trouble accessing your account on PSN, I will have a link for that as well down there. And for anyone out there who is still having some issues, I will have a very helpful and nifty Reddit thread link down in the description with all the other links, it's getting very crowded down there, where it's kind of basically acting like a Q&A at this point. So if you're having any issues, they should be able to lead you in the right direction because as I've mentioned many times, when it comes to hacking your Vita, there are just so many different ways to do it and Methods. And I guess that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say here today. So <laughs> I know a lot of people out there are going to have a lot of things to say, and I'd love to hear from you guys. How does this hack make you feel? Were you shocked by it? Is this going to be affecting you big time or not going to be affecting you at all? Or maybe you could just care less about it. Please leave me all of that info down below. And as always, fellow Vita fans, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It really means a lot to me. Love you all, and I'll see you next time. This video has been brought to you in part by all of these wonderfully generous supporters who help make this content possible. So a big thank you goes out to Gutter Drums, Hemdal Imbert, Wendy K, David Ray, Phantom XRS, Saul Ramirez, Kyle Brooks, JR, Silica, Per Sterner, Adam Thury, Skullshire Tugel TCG, BMF, Claymer Merlarkey, BG Legends, Jared Hado, Kevin Enry, Heston Joseph, Crazy Cat, Rodrigo Vera, Hero Acer, Adam Sondi, PS Vita S, Richard Cruz, Joseph Chavak, Jelle, H Hitter, Michael O'Connor, Chris Foxhound, Save and Fire, Franz Hartle, Aridri, No Good, Lacerated 87, PSP Guru, Jamie, Hector Gonzalez, Kayonko, Burrs and Mystery, Juan M. Hermesio, Eric DeWitt, Tasha Monti, Mazgus, Matt Hargett, Buzz Saiyan, Razal Pliskin, 1488 Dental, Azumara, Nintendo Switch at 2am, Donut Valley, Ricardo Martinez, Dr. Super Artie, Randy Azudech, Makis Blob, B Mystery, Matt Fox, Reiko Star, Neo Arashi, Milk Sama, Bushin Ryu Cat, Airkick72, Zacredo, Alan Iwazu, Shin Snake, and Mashuga360. If you would be interested in supporting the channel and gaining access to a number of perks, including having your name featured on the end credits of these videos, or if you wish to remain anonymous, that can be provided too, then make sure to check the links down 
in the description below, I have numerous ways for you to do this down there. Can't support in this manner? Don't worry about it. I also have some affiliate links from both Amazon and PlayAsia for anyone who is interested in purchasing something from them. Basically, the way it works is so long as you use one of those links to just access their website, then anything you purchase afterwards, a small commission will go to help support this content at no extra cost to you, the consumer. I also have channel merchandise available, and of course, as always, likes and shares can help equally as much. Well, what can be said at this point, Sony? You certainly are full of surprises, yet not surprising at the same time. How do you even do something like that?